From the studios of Staten Island Community Television, you're watching In the Bleachers, the TV show for the world's most passionate sports fans. Hello, everyone. I'm Jamie Hickson, joined by my dear friend over the phone. The hardest, baddest, sexiest man on cable access TV. The man of the hour with the mighty power. That's right for all the young ladies out there. It is I, Hector Bosa, once again, talking to you from the phone with the passionate, passionate, passionate fans out there, the way I'm passionate about my women. So, Jamie. Yes. Question. What has been the biggest thing going on right now, and what's the worst thing that's been going on right now in sports? Well, I can tell you the worst thing that's going on right now. It's the Yankees slump. They just got swept by the Red Sox. Before that, all they could do was uh, t split four games with the Rays. And before that, getting swept by the Tigers, of all people. The best, well, the best thing that's going on right now, probably the Brooklyn Nets. Okay. Now, for me, it's the fact that Logan Paul is still boxing, <laughs> and his ass didn't get knocked out yet. And <laughs> How does Floyd Mayweather not knock him down? I think he, he thought of it as an exhibition fight, as, as I heard a clip. Mm. On uh, one of the one of the, one of the radio stations, the sports stations, and he called it an exhibition fight. He goes, "I'm not 30 years old. I'm not 20 or 30 years old anymore. Either he's that good, he, either he's that good of a shape, or like you said, he he concluded it as a just a, a regular exhibition match where he didn't really train as hard as he should or would." Hmm. But he got paid a lot. I'm sure both of them got paid a lot, and I'm sure a lot of people want to see this boy get beaten. Yeah, very they, badly. Yeah, they do. And you know, I think that's the worst thing coming out in sports right now. I think the other thing that's coming out in sports right now is the fact that one of the Mets pitchers is being accused of uh, <clears throat> picking up the ball. Yeah, Jacob Degrom. Now, I don't know. I mean, the Mets are doing what the Yankees did last year when when they had all these bad, you know, all their good people out of injuries, and they just brought in people that you would have never thought would succeed, and they're just plugging up the holes and doing the best they are right now. Well, I don't know about you, but, uh, but I think this whole thing is much ado about nothing, to be honest with you. Jacob deGrom does not need to scuff the ball because he's that great of a pitcher. Yeah, but even the, even the ball players are coming out, and they're snitching. But they were all, I mean, basically they're all doing it in some shape or form. Mm -hmm. Now, whether it's legal or not, first of all, remember Phil Negro. The famous well, he he has a file in his in his in his uh, pants, and then he flung it out and said, "Oh, what is this?" Because they used angry boards, you know, to do something with their fingers, you know, to file their fingers, their nails down, and so on. Mm -hmm. And they know I I mean I'm sure Phil Necro knew at the time he wasn't supposed to bring the file on the field, but. You know, it, it, there's going to be two weeks of them checking on him now. And like I said, the Mets are plugging up the holes. They're they're doing everything right, and they're and the Yankees. You know, they got hefty contracts, especially with Staten, and all their guys that are supposed to do something. The majority of the time, they're injured. Yeah, the Yankees got a whole bunch of guys that are on the injured list right now. You One, know, they they might be able to get themselves some pitching help pretty soon because one of the guys who had Tommy John surgery about a year ago, Luis Severino, he yeah. just he just started his first minor league uh, 
rehab assignment game the other night. So I think it's just a matter of time before he makes his way back to the big club and starts for the Yankees again. Yeah, but it has to do with hitting right now because at this point in time, you got to figure like this. You have one big contract that nobody wants. You got your best players the majority of the time on the DL. Okay? Which mm-hmm. is Judd, Staten, and Sanchez. Those are your big studs. And the rest are great hitters as well. But, yeah. you know, when you have all three of them always on the injured, injured list, and you figure with all the technology that you have, they're working on and so on, and they're getting more injured then than they were before, unless they didn't tell you that they were injured because they're fear of losing their job. Yeah. But, you know, I was reading in the newspaper that how do you break up that team? Do you break up that team now and go, you know what, let's start from scratch because, or do you stay with it and try to fix it because, like I said, they're so stacked with contracts that it's very hard for them to do anything. And who do you get rid of? Who do you fire? Do you fire Brian Cashman, Aaron Boone, the hitting coach? What do you do to try to shake things up? You know, I was thinking the exact same thing. Maybe it's time for the Yankees to uh, blow this whole thing up. But knowing how the Yankees operate, they're not going to go that way. They, they still think that they could contend for the Eastern Division title and for a World Series. But the way things are going with this team right now, the only, the only guy who seems to be a, a consistent hitter right now is Aaron Judge, and he's over 300. Everybody else is either uh, at 260 or, a, or below, which is just pedestrian. And the, and the worst and the worst part is they're making some of these uh, they're making some of these pitchers look like they're they're Cy Young when they're really not. Well, that's one of the problems that you're having now with the Yankees. How do you split them apart, and who do you get rid of? Considering they're good ball players, but they're always on the injured on the injured list. That's a great question. I mean, to be quite honest with you, I don't think that there's anybody that they, th- that they can get rid of, even if they wanted to. There's no getting rid of Stanton. There's no getting rid of D.J. LeMayhew, who signed a new six-year deal. It- it's gotten to the point where uh, they may have to just wait this one out and, and-, and see if they can uh, start themselves a-, a whole new streak. Well, let's put it this way. The Yankees have not played well against their own division, the Eastern Division. They've, get, they've gotten w- losing records against everybody except the Orioles. Meanwhile, against the Central and the Western Division, the Yankees seem to be playing reasonably well. Right now, the Yankees have uh, a road trip coming up. They have to go to Minnesota first, and then they have to go to Philadelphia for, a, for an interleague series. Maybe the Yankees, all they need is to fatten up on non-division opponents and see if they can uh, right themselves going into uh, a future series with uh, an Eastern Division opponent. Exactly. You know... You're going to have to, you know, these, some of these teams, like you said, they're making them, some of these pitches to be Cy Young Award pitches, which they're not. But yeah. how do you allow, you see, the, the point I'm trying to make is, and hopefully you can answer it, is who do you get rid of? And how do you get rid of? And how do you get rid of them considering the big contracts that they have? Like Stanton. I'm sure people would love to get rid of Stanton. Because he really doesn't do nothing except get hurt more than anything. Um, So what do you do? I'll tell you right now, no one is going to take on Stanton's contract. 
I mean, how, how many years are left over on, on this deal? A good seven or eight years left? Yeah, I mean, how much how much how much time does he have in his contract? I know it's a ten year contract, but try thirteen year deal. So how much does he have left? I could probably research that for you. Let me see All here. Right. That'll be good because while you're researching that, you know, let me ask you something about the Knicks. Were they a disappointment, or were they something to go, you know? Their regular season was very good, but this this uh, playoff that they had, and for the record, Giancarlo Stanton is signed through 2027, so he's got another... Six years and an option year left over. So he's got an option for two more years then? For one more year. That's 2028. He'll be a free agent in 2029. Right. So, again, how do you get rid of him? The only way, the, the only way is probably for the Yankees to pick up a lot of the money in the deal. And uh, that would be the only way for the Yankees to pick up a lot of the money in the deal. I'd say 80 to 90% of the contract they would have to pick up. But right now... I'll put it, I'll put it to you like this. Who do you get rid of? If you're trying to break up the team, who do you get rid of? If you can't get rid of him... Unless there's some type of deal where you pick up someone with a with almost an exact contract, with almost the same contract, that's the only way, contract for contract type of deal. Mm-hmm. That's the only way you get rid of him. Yeah. But who do you who do who on the team do you get rid of? Well, there's one guy who who's been. Uh pretty much a lightning rod for for uh for controversy among the fans that is first person i would look at is glaber torres because he cannot play shortstop for the life of him he's a very very poor defender at second base he does reasonably well but i would look at glaber torres as a uh, one guy to probably uh, jettison. Another guy that I would look at right now, uh, one of the pitchers that they have, Jamison Tyone. Jamison Tyone has been a complete and utter disappointment for the Yankees this season. He's only won one game this year. And quite frankly, uh, I expected a lot more out of the kid. As far as somebody else, well, I'm not sure if uh, I'm not sure Do if you this get is. Rid of Sanchez? Ah, because there's another name. I mean, you got remember in order to give, you got to get you know, you got to give in order for you to receive. Yeah, you know, just like that. That's another guy that I would consider thinking that I would consider getting rid of is, is uh, Gary Sanchez. One of the worst defensive catchers in the game. He doesn't block balls in the dirt very well. And you can make the argument that the other catcher that they have, Kyle Higashioka, calls a better game than Sanchez does. Uh, some of the pitchers there, they actually like working with Higashioka a little bit more than Sanchez. Yeah, but he's a better hitter. That's the thing. And he's a decent catcher for what he's needed for. I mean, he's not the greatest catcher, but... And, and because you can remember something, where are you going to put him, on first base? 
No, Gary Sanchez is not a first baseman. I'll tell you that right now. He has played the position before. That's what I'm saying. If you're going to use him mm -hmm. and not use it, put him on catcher, where do you put him? Well, my guess, not sure if this is a, this is the way to go, but why not try and turn him into an outfielder? Yeah, because like I said, most times he's going to first or outfield. And I can see him playing first because he has played first base. Mm -hmm. You know, I can see him playing first, but if they get rid of him, you know, you got to get some good guy because it's his back. It's not his defensive. He's not great defensively, but he can hit. Mm -hmm. And maybe he needs to go to another team. That's another thing, you know. Because how many people have gone to other teams and they blossom a lot better than when they play for the Yankees? I mean, how many Yankee shows have you known? And then when they come to the Yankees, they 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 don't know how to hit anymore. They don't know how to feel. And that's happened a lot. Mm-hmm. Well, you pretty much hit the nail right on the head. I mean, it's it's gotten to a point where the Yankees really have to do something because they're two games over 500 right now. And even though it's only June, and uh, the trade deadline is not too far from now, so they really have to get creative as far as what they need to do. At this rate, a big uh, bat is what the Yankees really could use right now. But the problem is they have so little in the farm system that they, ha that they really don't know how they're going to be able to get that big bat in the first place. So this is where the Yankees really have to think creatively and, and, and try to make use of some of their assets So what do you think, Hector? Hector? Yeah. No, I'm here. I was just wondering something. I had a question because I was just trying to think of a question because, you know, when it comes to the Yankees, like I said, you have big contracts. Who do you get rid of? Do you get rid of Judd? Do you try to get rid of Stanton? Do you try at least to see... And then who could he get? Do you try to get, make it young again? Because they're not an old team. No, but they're definitely not. I mean... They're not an old team. Aaron Judge is in his, uh, let's see. He's in his 20s, the late 20s. Mid, mid to late 20s. Glaber Torres is in his 20s. Miguel Andujar is in his 20s. Kyle Higashioka, I think, is in his early 30s. Clint Frazier is in his 20s. So they're not bad age-wise. It's just contract-wise. Contract-wise, yeah. Contract-wise, they're getting killed, especially with Stanton's contract. But again, if you can get someone to match his contract, such as a pitcher, hey, he, oh, I'm glad what's-his-name got picked up for the L.A. Dodgers. You mean Albert Pujols? Yeah, I'm glad. Yeah. I'm glad they're giving him a shot because... You know, that's the guy you don't give up on. You know, he still one wants to play, and he still thinks he can play. So let's see what he can do with the Dodgers. He's already gotten a, a couple of big hits for them. Let's see what he can do for for them for the rest of the season. Exactly, exactly. You, you, you said it, you know. And, you know, are the Yankees in the same boat as the Knicks? where you decide now who do you keep? Because i tell you the truth. Did they, like I said, was it, was it a big disappointment that they didn't continue on? Of course or it was. Can, or can you accept the fact that they weren't ready to continue and 
at least they showed you that they can get you there. Let me tell you something. No one ever accepts losing as an athlete at all. That's true. The Knicks but wanted the Knicks wanted nothing more than to advance as far as they could into the playoffs. But yeah, it just but didn't work out for them. At, at, no, as I'm it turns saying, out, Atlanta the was fan, the better team. You're right. But as a Knicks fan, as a Knicks fan now, how, as a Knicks fan, do you see the Knicks? Do you see them as a big disappointment? Or do you say, you know what, this is, a, this is the first step in the right direction? It was disappointing that they lost to Atlanta, but it, but for them to have even made the playoffs was a step in the right direction for them. Now exactly. comes now comes the big part, and that's what do they do to try and improve this team? Well, I'm already hearing one name that's being connected to them that could CP3. probably what's that? I'm hearing CP3. I'm hearing all the all the big all the guys. I'm, I'm, I'm hearing the usual suspects. You're hearing Chris Paul. I'm hearing Damian Lillard. Yeah. You know, and I'm going, if you're going to keep that team young, keep it young. You know, don't, don't, you know, unless you know they have something in the tank. Because I think, are they the second best team that has the most picks? Because I think it's Miami or Oklahoma. Is it Miami? It's either Miami or Oklahoma City, picks? yeah. Or Oklahoma that has the most picks for at least for two years or three. Oklahoma City has a plethora of picks that they could probably they use have to get them. They have 34 picks, if I remember correctly. Yeah. From the last time. Mm-hmm. Okay. They can do something. The yeah, problem they can is definitely who's do something. going to come out of that system. Because there aren't that many big names anymore. And um, I was reading also, because I know how to read sometimes, that the Spanish kid that they uh, got, he's coming next year. Yeah, he signed his contract. He's all set for next year. He's coming next year. He's what? Six what? Six two or six nine? Or six eight? Six five somewhere. I think he's about six three. And he's playing guard. What's yeah. disappointing about the Knicks with the playoffs, they forgot how to play the game. Trey, I mean, they really I, – I don't. I think it was more their fault than, than the Hawks playing really good basketball. I think it was just them that they couldn't just get it started. I think it was more their fault than anything. It wasn't – the Hawks were good. The mm-hmm. Hawks were good. You know, give the devil their due. But were they that good to stop them? No, I think the Knicks stopped themselves. Because right now, who do you – do you keep Derrick Rose? Oh, or do you go, you know what? That's a tough question. Do you – or do you go, you know, we're going to get one of the guys that you just mentioned. Because that... if you get – and then you got, like I said, you got the Spanish kid coming up next year. You're thinking of Luca Vildoza. Yeah. And um, the other Spanish guy, I think. The other Spanish guy that played with the Knicks, um, he said that he's better than him because he played in the EuroLeague this year. I'm not really sure uh, who you're referring to. Oh, who was, that, who was that Spanish guy that the Knicks had? I think that he went to the Nets. He went to the Lakers. He played for the Nets, the Lakers. And then he went to the Knicks, and he played, I think, two years or a year. And he was good for what he was for what, for what it was worth. He was good for that, for what he did. He was a guard. And he said that... Um, that he was better than him. Pedro, P, uh, his last name starts with a P. But um, all I know is you got the 18-year-old kid coming up next year. Right. You're losing half your team next year. You're losing your team next year. 
Mm-hmm. Who do you keep and who do you get rid of? And this year's crop of people, I mean, who, is, who, who, who really is coming out that you could say, oh, well, I'm glad to have them? The only thing, or the only uh, kid I could uh, think of right now is Cade Cunningham from Oklahoma State. He's a big man, and he's a, a, a good scoring big man, too. Kind of slim in stature, but, or, or in build, I should say, but he's definitely somebody to, to build a team around. I mean, because who's who's an untouchable to you? Who's untouchable on the Knicks? You mean? Yeah, Barrett. Barrett is Barrett untouchable? Quigley untouchable? Robinson untouchable? Mm, I wouldn't call him untouchable. No. The only person I I I would uh, think twice about sending away is Mitchell Robinson because the Knicks needed somebody in the interior that could alter or block shots or uh or protect the rim that's this is why the Knicks this is one of the reasons why the Knicks lost is because they really missed Mitchell Robinson in the middle it's not that he plays bad he just gets hurt yeah that's the thing it's not that you say oh well the reason why we got to get rid of him is because he plays bad and he doesn't play the game he plays the game very well Yes, he does. The problem is he gets hurt. I think he's untouchable depending upon who do you receive, you know? Because I think they've given up on Kevin Knox. Even though he's, what, 20 years old now? Mm-hmm. And, you know, Obi Tobin, do you, is he untouchable? Yeah. I'm not so That's sure that point. Obi Toppin who, who, is, who uh, is who untouchable. Who's untouchable to you? I would seriously think about keeping Mitchell Robinson because the Knicks really need somebody in the center position or power forward that could that could protect the rim. He's one guy who I would seriously thinking about keeping. Who? Mitchell Robinson. Mitchell Robinson, yeah. Yeah, okay, he's a keeper. Are they need a defender. Keeper? R.J. Barry, keeper or Riddle? Uh, he made a lot of good strides this year. And again, his age, and he's getting better. It's not that he's getting worse, he's getting better. Think of it that way. Mm-hmm. Emmanuel Quigley. I'd keep him. He's a really exciting player. Uh, who else? Robertson, Quigley... Barrett, Obi Tobin. Hmm. I would say. I'd say 60, 55, 45, get rid of him because he's not a great athlete. He's also very weak defensively. That, that's what I that's what I told you before when I said that he had dead legs. He doesn't move well defensively. But again, but again, he is a young guy. And he's he's got more of an upside than a downside. He's a young guy, but I worry about him defensively, though. You can worry about everybody defensively on that on that damn team. But you got to remember, the Knicks had the number one defense in the league. Yeah. So, you know, they play as a team, not individually. So he didn't hurt the team. But he did he hinder his team a little bit. But you could still you could you can always do something with him, you know. Mm-hmm. And and then the rest of the team, you know, who do you keep? Who do you bring back next year? Well, I definitely bring back Emmanuel quickly and. I would think about bringing R.J. Barrett back as well. The Why one, would you think he's, well, he's one of your best players, and he's, and, he, and he's got an upside. He doesn't got a downside. 
He was able to add a, a three point shot to his to his game this year, which was pretty important. Yeah, and again, he's a young guy, and he's got an upside. He's he's getting better. It's not as if you're, let's say, Kevin Knox. He showed some promise, but he doesn't. He's not showing you that he's he's stuck in neutral. Yeah. He he's stuck in neutral. He's not going anywhere, but they're not they're not doing nothing with him. And again, Damon Lillard. Damon Lillard, do you keep him? I mean, do you go after him? Who do you? There's nobody in the free agency that that's worth I think going after. I think you're going to build Chris a Paul team maybe within the draft. Chris Paul is 34 years, 32 years old, 34. Approaching 36. 36 years old. Okay. Like I said, in basketball, he's a, he's a senior. He's also a superstar who commands a lot of respect in the locker room. And without him, the Suns would not have made the playoffs this year. Okay. So do you think he so he could improve the team in your eyes? Oh, big time. And he'd be the best point guard that the Knicks would have since Clyde Frazier. But you have to get him on a trade or he's a restricted free agent, isn't he? He has um he has a player option that he could either take or turn down. And it's worth $44 million, which is beyond me for him to turn down. But he's going to do what. How long do you sign? Yeah, that's another thing, too. How long do you sign him for? According to NBA rules, four years. Either three or four years. Four years. You can sign him up to four years, but how long would you sign him for? Two years with an option as for a third. That would be my guess. Knowing him, he would probably want a long-term deal. He probably won four yeah, years. Of course. You gotta look for, you know, you gotta look out for yourself. But again, Derek, you know, you got Derek Rose. You signed Derek him. Rose. I'll tell you right now, he played some of his best basketball this season. He is a, an extremely difficult decision to to try and make on. Because well, that's another thing, too. How do you, you keep him? That, that's the point. Who do you keep on the team? Because, like I said, the, the people that got you there, they're not going to be there no more. Yeah. The majority of the team is not going to be there no more. Do you keep Noel's Noel? Noel's Noel? Nerland's Noel? Hmm. But he did help. He's a, he he, he's a really he good defender. He was one of the reasons why the Knicks were the were the best defensive team in the league this year. And I mean, he, he gives them nothing offensively, but defensively, he's a real stopper. Offensively, I I heard different. I heard that he's he's a good guy under the board. He's always around the basket that he'll give you points there. And as a defender, he's more of an offensive player than a defensive player. That's what I've been told now. By the way, Hector, I just got an alert. Tom Thibodeau just won Coach of the Year. Yes! He deserves it. He definitely deserved it. Now, let's see what he can do next year, though, because... He did the same thing in Minnesota where he took them to the playoffs one year, but then the next year, everything just collapsed, and he wound up getting fired. Well, was that team on the rebuilding stage? Yeah, they were oh, rebuilding. You're going to have to count on the Knicks' trust. You're going to have to count on the Knicks' trust to go and say, you know, you coach. We'll do what we have to do because I'm sure they're going to ask them who should they pick. 
uh, I'm sure the, it, for the draft next year, I'm sure they're going to pick. Is there anybody that's coming out next year that, that's worth a, a damn? You mean in 2022? Yeah. We'd have to see um, what freshmen or sophomores are going to be uh, making an impact in the college game. And we'd also have to look internationally, too, to see exactly what's going on. Because you're only allowed a certain amount of international ball players, right? Yeah, or, I think you're allowed one or two. So they already got one. Like I said, what would it? I mean, I think a bigger disappointment would have been the Nets losing to the Celtics. I think that would have been a bigger disappointment than the Knicks losing in the playoffs. Oh, obviously. I mean, the Nets because were built to win a championship. Celtics, because, yeah, because they're built for now, and, I'm, and I feel bad for James Harden. Yeah, he got yeah, himself he, hurt he, one more time, and we don't even know how long he's going to be out. That I mean, hamstrings are a real <laughs> bitch. Yeah, that that is true. And, you know, and instead of the people being behind the Brooklyn Nets, they're not really behind them. Uh, this is still a New York Knicks team. Now I will I'll, I'll I'll gladly hop on the net because they're a New York product, and I was an I was a net fan when I when I used to go to their games in Jersey when they were really bad and they were laughable. Mm-hmm. <laughs> but um, you know, where do you see that? If I think to me, if they don't go all the way. This year, where if they don't make it at least to the finals, it's a big disappointment. So they have to win. They Anything to win. less than a championship is a disappointment. Even if they made the finals, it would be a colossal disappointment. This team is built to win now. Now, I, I want to see what the Nets can do without James Harden against the Milwaukee team that's got Giannis Antetokounmpo and... Uh, Chris Middleton and Drew Holiday, the ex-net Brooke Lopez. Uh, th- this is a good team they're going up against. But the Nets are better. The Nets are better, but uh, you don't play the they're games better. on paper. Uh, on, on paper, they're, they're better. On paper, they're a hell of a lot better. I mean, you got, like I said, if Harden goes down, you still got Kevin Durant, Kyrie Irving. Griffin, their center. Mm-hmm. You, you got a bunch of all stars on that team. If one goes down, the other guy takes the slack. The only problem with the Bucks is that they don't have an outside. They don't have someone that complements their star player. Yeah. They don't have no one on that team that complements the star player. And you're expecting him to win, but there's nobody out there just like the Knicks. Let's say that can shoot the three ball that you can count on to shoot the three. Yeah, they're in the same predicament. They got an all star, but they got nobody else. Mm-hmm. I mean, they got a good team, but they don't got that second guy that that that, that go to guy. You know, mm-hmm. and. Like like you said, if the Nets do not go all the way, or at least to the finals, they got to make it at least to the finals. And when, and like you said, if they don't win the championship, but they make it to the finals, okay, fine. People will accept that, I think. But if they if if they let the Bucks beat them, it, it's a wash. Hector, it's because championship or bust, man. That's the way to think. Championship or bust. Yeah, no, no, you're absolutely right. But you got to think of it logically, too. You can't, you, you're thinking of it, you know, championship or bust, but you got to think the way the fans, the way the fans are thinking. Not the way the players are thinking, because the players are thinking the same way. I want to see them win the championship. Yeah. Just like I want to see the Knicks win the championship. But were they going to win it this year? No. They weren't built to win this year, to go that far this year. 
I thought they would have at least made it because I've been predicting that they'll make the playoffs, but they wouldn't go past the first round. Well, I thought with the Hawks they would, but they didn't. But again, that's the Knicks. Now the Nets, that's a whole different animal. That yeah. is a whole different animal. Well, speaking of the playoffs, uh, just last night there was a seventh and deciding game in the Clippers Maverick series, and once again Kawhi Leonard showed why he is an elite player in this sport. Came away with a twenty-nine point game. That that was a strange series to begin with. The first six games of that series, the road team was undefeated, but then came seven the seventh and deciding game last night and the Clippers won so now the Clippers will get a chance to play against the Utah Jazz while the Suns are going to face the Nuggets one team right now that people are forgetting in these playoffs is Atlanta once again Trey Young showed how dynamic of a young player he is. The Hawks had the had the Sixers down by 26. They won by four to end it. But again, people are sleeping on the Hawks as if they're they're they're, uh, they're nobody. They're not nobody. This is a team that's got some really really good players. I mean, there's Young, there's John Collins, there's Bogey Bogdanovich. Okay. But they were ready to trade some of those guys. They were ready to trade some of those guys, and look what happened. They made the playoffs. They knocked out the Knicks, and look what look what's going on now. They're they're one up on the Sixers. I would be very very careful sleeping on the Hawks if I were you. So do you do you say that the Hawks are the Cinderella team of this of, of this year? They're the Cinderella team of this year's playoffs, most definitely. So even if they lose, at least you can say, you know, they found they won as far as they could. Exactly right. That's not bad. I mean, again, they were that was another team that wasn't supposed to make the playoffs, or at least not get past that far. Because the Knicks technically were supposed to beat them on paper. On paper, they were supposed to beat them, but the Knicks, I don't know. They they actually, just, they didn't know how to play basketball. They were afraid. Hmm. But the Nets are, are, are really playing. And how about L.A.? The, 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 um, the Clippers and, uh, and LeBron's team. Oh, you mean the, the Lakers? Lakers? Yeah. Don't be surprised if you see major changes on the Lakers during the summer. Really? Yeah. I'm going to leave it. What changes do you see? They're not getting rid of LeBron, and they're keeping AD. They can't get rid of LeBron. Even if they wanted to, they can't. Why not? It's making a, a ton of money for one. And for another, it's LeBron James. As far as what what kind of changes they're going to make, look for them to get another shooter. Look for them to get a point guard. Look for them to get maybe some some help coming off the bench. Anyway, uh, yeah, but the Lakers, you say, but who's again, who is out there for them to get? Because unless they do it on the trade, there aren't that many free agents. I mean, they're not going to bring back Lonzo Ball. No, that's not going to happen. Okay, and let me ask you that's another one. Does Lonzo Ball go? Does he leave the team? Do they match whatever he gets? Tell you what, 
if the Knicks want to get if the Knicks want to get a point guard, there's your guy right there. But to be quite honest with you, I think he would be best served staying in New Orleans. He had a really a really solid season with the Pelicans, and right now his future is uh, really looking on the bright side. Do they match? Does does the team who ha, who has it? I forgot. The Pelicans. Uh, the Pelicans. The Pelicans. Now he plays well with Zion Williams, but they they're stacked with guards. Yeah, they are. So, do you keep him, or does let's say the Knicks because they have? I think if you're going to go after anybody. I think that's the guy to go after. Yeah. You don't you don't put you know you don't pack you know you don't back up the the bank on him. You don't you don't you know you don't give all the money to him. But you give enough because remember they got enough to match. They're supposed to match whatever they they get. Mhm. Because he's on an option year. So do you think they'll let the Pelicans let them go, or do you think they'll match whatever they get? Because he's that important to the team. I would think that the Pelicans would want to bring him back. To be honest with you, I mean, even though they didn't uh, qualify for the postseason, they have a really good one-two punch of him and Williamson that could probably go a long way in the future. That's if he gets his act together, too, because that's another guy that gets hurt a lot. Yeah. Williamson, for a guy of his of his uh, body type, he's a pretty soft player. Does he remind you of Charles Barkley, his body type? No, Charles Barkley was a lot more overweight than, than, uh, than Williamson was. Williamson is, uh, I think... A combination of uh, girth and also muscle. Yeah, that that's true, but I don't. Know, I can see him leaving. I can see him leaving because see who I don't leaving. Know, I think he wants to be there. I really don't. I think he wants to. I think he wants to go to the Knicks. Reason being, it's a bigger stage. Not because his father wants him to. I think he, unless he doesn't want the limelight, I think the best setting for him is Nick. Because imagine him and Barrett together. Yeah. And then do you see CP3 coming in? Or um, He would be the perfect mentor for those two. Well, even Derrick Rose. Derek like I Rose said before, Derrick Rose, uh, you really have to think long and hard about whether you want to bring him back or not because he played so well for them this past season when he after and he got traded. How many is he standing for, too? That's one of the things that you have to consider. Three-year that- deal, maybe? Two years with an option as a, as a third, yeah. I, I would think that'd be more than fair. Because, like I said, the one good thing that the Knicks did this year that they did is that their salary cap is big. Mm-hmm. Now you just hope and pray that they that the balls or the players land and they get the players that they really need. Because, like I said, there's no big name out there. There's not a big name out there. Game a little bit, yeah, CP3 is a big name, but he's not a Kevin Garnett. Uh, Kevin Garnett. He's not AD. He's not at a Batubo. He's none of the, he, they're not superstars in it. I mean, I don't know how to explain it because they're not over the hill. They still carry weight. 
but are they worth, you know, let's say four years, whatever, fifty million or sixty million dollars, or a hundred million? Mm-hmm. You know, that's right. the thing you can't consider. But you know, so you think the Lakers are going to break up the team? Not necessarily break up the team, but make some major changes at a couple of spots. I think they need a shooter. I a shooter. I think they need help coming off the bench, and I really think that they need help in the interior. They didn't have a, a an intimidator that could either alter or block some shots. And you got to see if LeBron gives his approval, because that's another thing. Yeah. You have to ask LeBron for his practically his permission to see if you can get that guy. Because he's the one that decides and says, I can play well with him. That's how much pull this guy has. He can fire coaches and everything. Yeah. You know, but you know what I'd like to see one day? What's that? Them calling the game the way they're supposed to call the game. Do you know that those superstars would be out in about 10 minutes? <laughs> yeah. Because they're not calling the game anymore. They don't call palms. They palm the ball. They hold the ball like if it was a grapefruit. Yeah. I mean, they do a lot of things wrong. And it's funny to me. They don't call the game like they're supposed to. And because you're a superstar, they really don't want you to leave. They want you to stay in the game because... You bring in the rating. Mm-hmm. You know, but, um, hey, the Islanders, search for them. Yep, they're tied at two in, uh, in two ways. One in the series and another in the scoreboard for game five tonight. That, was that another surprise team? Or did you think that they were the going Islanders? To... I really thought that the I really expected the Islanders to compete, not just compete, but but uh, contend this season. And they beat one of the best teams in the league in the Penguins in that first round. And now they're giving the the Bruins a whole lot of trouble right now. Do you consider them a Cinderella team? No, not even. Right now, the one team that I could consider a Cinderella story is maybe Carolina. Really? How so? For one, they've gotten uh, a lot of scoring from their from their back line, and for another, they've gotten great goaltending. And let me ask you: mm-hmm. Who do you think they're going to go with on goalie? They're going to go with the hot hand on goalie, or the Islanders, or are they going to go? Or are they going to pick and choose? Well, they've gone with Semyon Varlamov uh, for the last couple of games, and he's done reasonably well for them. And next year, what do you do? We'll worry about next year when that time comes. Right now, first things Enjoy first. The ride. Enjoy this ride for as long as it goes. Enjoy the ride. And for the record, there is 10.49 left in the second period, and the Islanders and the Bruins are tied at two. Damn. And it's best of five or best of seven? Best of seven. Oh, okay. Come on, Islanders. Yep. Let's go Islanders. Let's this, go. This is this is the the swing game for for the Islanders right now. If they win this game, they put a lot of pressure on the Bruins going into game 6 on Long Island. Yeah, they they play better at home. Mhm. So, at least we have something to look forward to. Hopefully the Nets won't be a disappointment and they'll do what they're supposed to do and win, win, win. 
go go all the way. The Yankees, I don't know. Do you think they're going to get rid of their batting coach? How do you think they're going to shake things up? Fire Marcus Timms? No, nah, the... the I'll be shocked if, to be honest with you, if they just if they decide to fire him because he's been busting his tail working with that team. Yeah, it, it's going to be hell with them. It's yep. going to be hell because, like I said, they were they were saying that if the old Steinbrenner was here, he really would shake up things. He would eat the contract. He would eat Stanton's contract with no problem. Because he wants to win now, you know. Mm-hmm. And they and they even mentioned Donald Trump in that in that thing too. Oh, brother! You know where they said you know you need a shaker and the <laughs> that Donald Trump would do the same thing. He because he wants to because he he fires people. Steinbrenner would fire people right away. Again, do you fire the batting coach right now? Do you fire the manager? Do you get rid of Brian Cashman? What do you do in a situation like this? Or do you just try to ride the wave and for as much as long as you can and then go, okay, enough for I think it takes I think it's gonna have to take one big trade to maybe shake things up for the Yankees right now. What trade is out there that they can get? It would have to be a trade for a big bat, any kind of big bat. Tell you what. Who- Who's out there? Search for this is out there. There's one He's guy who's going to be a free agent at the end of the season that the Yankees could probably go with right now that they could maybe give uh, also a long-term deal to. Who's that? Trevor Story from the Rockies. From the Dodgers? No, from the Colorado Rockies. Oh, really? Yeah. I think he's a better defensive shortstop than Glaber Torres. And batting-wise, I think Story edges him out a little bit. Now, the, the only question is, can Story put up the same numbers in the Bronx that he's done in Denver? That's going to be a big, big question. You know, one thing that we haven't even discussed right now is the Mets. The Mets were were able to to win uh, four games out of seven on the West Coast. They won two out of three in Phoenix, split four in San Diego. So after a night off tonight. They're playing bad teams. They're they're playing good teams. Mm -hmm. And like you said in the beginning of, of, of the story here, that the Nets, the Mets are playing the way the Yankees played last year because with all those people that are supposed to be there, they're, the guys that they're bringing up, they're just plugging the holes and they're winning games. Mm-hmm. They're winning games, and that's what a good team does. Exactly right. Now, I'm looking forward for them, for the guys to come back healthy to see what that team's going to really look like. Mm-hmm. Well, you know, unfortunately, we're at less than a minute, so this is the part where we have to say goodbye. But, Thank you. but six episodes left till that seven hundredth episode, which is going to take place they, next month. They, and we're going to broadcast it in Spanish. Yes, we're going to do the whole thing in <laughs> Spanish. We're going to do the SAP. Mm-hmm. <laughs> So if you want to hear it in English, all you got to do is press the button on your uh, on your remote control. <laughs> anyway, folks, thanks for watching. Thanks to Kenny Graham on the other side of the glass. Hector, thank thanks. you for watching and, and also for calling in as well. Thank you. All right. For everyone here, I'm Jamie. I'm Hector. Enjoy hey, the guys. games, folks. Let's go, Islanders. Let's go, Nets. Let's go, everyone. <laughs>